Praise the Lord, everyone. Would you please stand with us tonight? We're so excited about what Michael's going to be sharing in this service tonight. And to those that are viewing, we, we are so honored that you're taking the time this evening to listen to this service tonight. We want to invite the presence of the Lord into this assembly. This is the last time we're going to meet before Christmas. Carolyn, we're glad you're with us tonight. Thank you for coming in autumn. Thank you for coming tonight. Let's give them a hand, a welcome, please. Amen. And to all of you that aren't usually here on Wednesday night, we want to welcome you. Let's give them a hand tonight. Amen. God bless you. Oh, hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we come before you tonight. We thank you that you are Christmas. You are Christmas, Lord, 365 days a year. We're here to worship you tonight. We're here to exalt your name, glorify you, and thank you for all the blessings that you so abundantly bestowed upon us. We love you tonight. We praise you. We give you this service. Let it be a service that honors and lifts and exalts your precious name. In the name of Jesus. And amen. Amen. Sister amen. Thank you, Jesus. Can we give him a praise tonight? We're thankful for you, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for all that you do. We love you, Lord. We welcome you in this place, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Sing with me today. On the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere go. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Oh, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, oh, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name.
the sounding joy repeat the sounding joy repeat repeat the sounding joy and we will sing 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 joy to the world and we will sing of his love and wonders of his love and wonders wonders of his love and we will sing 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 joy to the world and we will sing sing Joyful, we adore Thee, God of war, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee. Thank you, God, for salvation. Thank you for coming for us, God. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's great to have such a good crowd here tonight to celebrate a Savior who came to save us. We have so much to be thankful for. I don't know if you haven't seen it on our uh, Facebook page. Pastor Michael posted it yesterday. If you guys pay attention at all and have been here, we've been praying for Brandon Pendergrass for months. That guy... They didn't think he was going to make it. I encourage you to go go on our page, on our members page, and just view that testimony. That guy's getting to go home, spend Christmas with his family. Hey, how incredible is that? We, we serve a great God, a great God who listens to us, and he listens to you guys, all right? Amen. We're going to continue to lift up um, Vicki, Al Nash, David Rainey, and Sarah, and they're... Uh, their conditions of cancer. We're going to continue to lift up John and Susan Gieselman. We're going to um, we're going to lift Rowan Houseworth up tonight. Yes. Pastor David's brother. We're going to continue to lift up Katie, Bra Brandy, Brother Denny's daughter. Mary Gilflin has requested prayer again. Sister Carolyn Wooden. We prayed for her a couple months ago. She had lost her husband. Well, she's reached out and she. She's asked for prayer. She's needing a touch. So we're going to believe that God's going to move in her life tonight. Um, we've been praying for Dixie Crutzinger, and her condition has gotten worse. She had COVID several, several weeks ago and been struggling with issues after she supposedly was cleared. And now they believe that she has developed fungal pneumonia in her lungs. She's in pretty bad shape. They've taken her to champagne. So let's pray, not just tonight. Let's continue throughout this this week and next week. Let's continue to lift Dixie up. She really and her family really needs God to move in her life. We're going to lift up uh, Tad's friend, uh, Eugene Schuster, who has, who's not in good health to begin with, but he's he's been uh, diagnosed with COVID. And we're just going to, you know, he's, he already heard us. He's better now. So... Amen. Amen. That's awesome. And let's just lift this service up. This is a, this is a Christmas service, and we're, 
We're going to believe that God is going to speak something new into our lives and move in us as we go in um, to this holiday season that we're going to go into it changed as a result of what God's going to speak to us tonight. Amen. Amen. Lord, we just come to you this morning. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that you have come down from heaven and that you have looked upon a people who do not deserve anything that we've received. But Lord, we've received already more than what we have ever deserved. And we just thank you for that, Lord. Lord, we want to continue to lift up the names Vicki, Al Nash, David Rainey, and Sarah to you. Lord, we just ask that you would continue. Lord, we thank you for the works that you've already done. But Lord, we ask that you would continue to move in their lives. We're just, we want to speak health. We want to speak healing in their lives. And we want to speak it in your name, Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you for what you're doing in John Gieselman's life and just pray that you would continue to move in his body in every condition that he deals with. We're just believing, Lord, that he's going to continue to move forward and be lifted up out of the things that he's dealing with. And Lord, we want to thank you for what you're doing in Sister Susan's life and just ask that you would continue to move in her and to strengthen her in her situation. And Lord, we praise you for that tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we lift up Ron Houseworth to you tonight, Lord. Again, he is familiar with the move of your spirit, and we're just believing right now that your spirit's going to fall in his home as we stand here praying for him, Lord. We just believe that, that your spirit would just saturate his house and that he would feel your presence, and Lord, that you would move on him both in the physical, Lord, and in the emotional, Lord, that he would just be strengthened and rejoice in your name, Lord. And Lord, we want to thank you for what you've been doing in Katie's life, and we just pray that you would continue in her situation, Lord, to just move, Lord, and just heal her, Lord, strengthen her in everything she faces, Lord, in her situation as a mother, and then still having to work as a nurse, Lord. Just be with her, we ask. And Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in Brandy's life, what you've already done. And Lord, what we believe that you're going to continue to do. We don't believe that you're going to leave Brandy where she's at. Lord, we believe that you're going to take her further, Lord, than she believes that she can be healed from this accident she had, Lord. We praise you, Jesus, for what you're doing in her. And Lord, we want to continue to lift up Mary Gilflin who's reached out, Lord. Lord, she had a, a good report the other day. We don't know what, the, what she's dealing with today, but Lord, we believe that as she received a good report the other day, she's going to receive a good We're going to receive a good report. And whatever she's dealing with today, Lord, just meet Mary's need right now, Jesus. And Lord, we want to lift up uh, Sister Carolyn to you, Lord. Lord, we just pray that all this could be behind her. All the complications that she's had in her body, in her physical person. Lord, we're just believing right now for a miracle in her life. And we thank you in advance for that, Jesus. And Lord, Lord, we come to you for Dixie. Lord, we want to lift her up harder and stronger. Lord, remind us through this week, Lord, to lift her up, Lord. She and her family, they need a miracle, Lord. And we're coming to you because we know that you are able, Lord, to work in her life today in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, open the doctor's eyes and just show them, Lord, that what they believe is impossible is possible today, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for what you're doing and what you've already done in Eugene, Lord. We just thank you. We've been lifting him up and we're grateful for that, Lord. Lord, we're believing tonight in this service, Lord, that you're going to move. We're believing that you're going to speak something new to us, Lord. We believe you for it. We thank you for it. We've came expecting. Lord, we believe you've anointed Pastor Michael and we've come. We're ready to receive, Lord. Move in our lives. Continue to excite us in who you are and in this community in this holiday season, Lord. Let us remember, Lord, that you are king. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are. We want to thank you again for being here for Landmark's Christmas service. We do have something special that was passed out at the beginning of the service. If you received one of these candles, we ask that at this time you'd get that out. And for those of you that um, weren't paying attention when they told you how to do this, you need to make sure that you turn your light, tighten it so that it'll come on. So we just ask that you worship with us as you hold your candle today. Thank you again for joining us.
Somebody clap your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lord. Would you clap your hands to him tonight? 
Hallelujah. He is, he is worthy of our praise. Amen. I said he is worthy of our praise. Amen. Hallelujah. We're so thankful for all of you that have come to be with us in service tonight for our Christmas service. Uh, all of our friends, family, and followers that have, uh, have joined us on Facebook, we want you to know that we are so thankful that you've taken time out of your evening to come here and be with us. All of our home folks and all of our guests, we have several guests with us tonight. Let's give our guests that are here a hand. We're so thankful that you're here. Amen. And we believe that the Lord is going to talk to us, that he's going to speak to us, that he's going to move in us. Amen. Now, I will tell you, I think we are recollecting all of those candles. Please make sure that they don't. We're going to use those again. Um, but uh, uh, before you get rid of them or before you discard them, there are two candles. And I'll ask Pastor David and, and Pastor uh, Chris to come up here just real quick. There are two candles that on the handle of them have an LC. They have an LC on them. If you have an LC on your candle... One of your candles. Oh, we've got one right here with Mickey. And oh, and we've got one here with Emma. All right. We actually have we actually have a gift uh, for each of you. If you want to come up here, we'll, we'll give these to you tonight. You guys had the magic candles. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much. Praise the Lord. And then I'd also like to ask Sister Jennifer Hilliard if she would come up. We're going to have her sing a solo. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just teasing. We, uh, she wasn't able to be with us in service on Sunday, but we have her baptismal certificate in obedience to the command and in following the example of our Lord Jesus Christ, was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ on the sixth day of September in the year 2020. And we celebrate this with her. I wonder if we could clap our hands to the Lord in celebration with Sister Jennifer. Amen. I, uh, I, I, I never cease to be amazed when people follow the commandment of the Scripture and they, the, the Scripture comes into fulfillment in their life. They, they repent. They're baptized in Jesus' name, and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, the change that their lives go through. And I'm so thankful for the progress and uh, the, the forward movement of all of those that have been baptized in Jesus' name this year, that have, have been filled with the Holy Ghost, that have been touched by his grace and his mercy. Are you as thankful for that tonight as I am? I wonder, would we clap our hands to the Lord one more time? Praise the Lord. Uh, I, I want to thank everyone again for uh, giving to the Christmas for Children. Uh, we raised right around $700 for uh, toward that cause, and uh, we had 11 extremely excited children uh, that we delivered to on Tuesday. Uh, I cannot tell you uh, what it does when you go into a situation where people have very little expectations in this time of year, and uh, you're representing a church that's willing to give above and beyond what they would normally give and do. Uh, I, I want to say thank you to this church. You have blessed a number of people this year in a number of ways. And uh, as the scripture says, give, and it will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I believe that all of the things that we've put forth and given this year are going to come back to us a hundredfold. And I'm expecting the good news of the Lord, and I'm expecting a great move of God because of what we've been pouring into his kingdom. Amen. Amen. I wonder if we could clap our hands to the Lord for the gift. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're, we're going to go to Genesis, the 49th chapter. And I know you're here for a Christmas service, but don't, <laughs> don't get lost. Genesis, the 49th chapter. We're only going to read one passage of Scripture. It's the 10th verse. It's already on the screen for you if you don't have your Bibles. If you do have your Bibles, I'll wait just a second for you to get there. I want to remind everyone that we will not have service this coming Sunday, Sunday the 27th. We'll be back the following Wednesday here uh, in service. Um, so uh, make sure that you're checking the Facebook page and, and staying up to date with what we've got going on. 
Uh, but we're excited about this Christmas season, this holiday season, and we know COVID has put all of us in a it's put all of us in a strange place, and and I know that everyone's struggling to try to get everything done and fit everything in. So we we thought it'd be a nice break for everyone just to have some extension on on their time, being able to gather with their family, and somebody say praise the Lord. The last thing that I'd say before we get started is uh, I, I would like to after service. Or when the service is coming to a close, I would encourage you to stay around. Uh, we have something very special and exciting we want to share with you here uh, in the church building. Um, so I, I would ask you if, if you can just hold off just for a few minutes when we're finished. Uh, we've got something we want to share that's extremely powerful and exciting. Somebody say praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 49 verse 10. If you would stand with us, it's customary at Landmark Church for us to stand while we read the word. And it's just one, one verse, so it won't be that long. And I also encourage you, if you would, to read it out loud with me. It goes like this. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come. Hang on just a second. Read that again with me. Until Shiloh come. Read it one more time. Until Shiloh come and to, unto him shall the gathering of the people be. I want to focus on that particular phrase, until Shiloh come. Look at your neighbor and tell him, Noel, Shiloh has come. Tell him again, Noel, Shiloh has come. Lord, we're so thankful for everyone that's here tonight, here physically in person in the sanctuary. And Lord, for all of those that have joined us across the airwaves tonight, we want you to know how much we appreciate you. And we're so thankful, Lord, that, that, that in our Christmas service we can feel the power of your spirit. Thankful for people's worship and, and praise and willingness, Lord, to walk into that realm where your spirit is and allow themselves to get in a place where you can do things in us. So thankful for that tonight. God, I'm trusting and believing that you're going to speak to us and you're going to challenge us. I believe tonight that somebody is going to be reached by the power and the presence of your word. If you believe that tonight, shout in Jesus' name. High five your neighbor. Tell him it's good to see him. God bless you. You may be seated. There, there is so much about Christmas that, that we don't understand. Uh, many, many words have lost their original meaning or sense to us in this, this postmodern era. Magi, swaddling clothes, nativity, and yes, even Noel. I want to focus on that word for just a second. That word is found in the beloved Christmas hymn, The First Noel. Has anybody know that? Noel, Noel. Noel, Noel, born is the king of Israel. What does this fourfold chanting of the word Noel mean? It, it's an old English word. As with other old English words, it's actually an abbreviation form, an abbreviated form of a longer phrase. Noel actually means and stands for now all is well. Somebody say now all is well. Jesus came into our world, now all is well. After hearing angels sing, fearful shepherds could then say Noel. After seeing the Christ child, wise men from the east could say Noel. Here, the aging Simeon and Anna sigh as they gazed upon a baby boy and shout, Noel, for the Messiah has come. Here, the entire oppressed cry, Noel, the Prince of Peace has come. The weak, the sick, the disabled cry, Noel, the great physician has come. Now, proverbial wisdom, and you all have heard this before, is, says that All's well that ends well. But at Christmas, all is well that begins well. Noel, all is well. And as we celebrate the Christmas season, I point you to a manger, to a cross, to an empty tomb, and to an upper room 
now all is well. Today, I point you to the oldest name of the Messiah used in Scripture some 1,700 years before Jesus was born. We we read it in our text in Genesis chapter 49 in the last half of the sentence where it says, until Shiloh come. And I believe it's important as we consider the Christmas story. We, We start from the beginning. Now, I don't know if you've experienced this or not, but Many times in my life, I've come into something in the middle of the story, and and because of that, I've missed much of the message in whatever story I'm following or being told. Can I get a witness? Has anybody ever been asked to choose sides, uh, and and you're coming in in the middle of the story? So that's why I want us to go all the way back to the beginning, to the book of Genesis, the, the book of generations. For from the first patriarch Adam to the last Joseph, we read of the early families of civilization. And so we recognize the book of Genesis as, as a book of generations. But it's also a book of degeneration. For we see humanity falling from its pristine perfection of paradise into sin. Then we watch as sin gets passed from generation to generation to generation. But finally, the book of Genesis is a book of regeneration. And God paints the possibility of freedom from sin liberally throughout this book. Jacob, or Israel, as God called him, painted hopes in the lives of his children. For in our text, Jacob has come to the end of life's road. Jacob is he's on his last leg. He's on his deathbed. And, and what a road Jacob traveled from a conniving young boy to a ruthless man to a crippled elder. The end of his, uh, of his life's journey finds him in the fairway, strange land of Egypt, reunited with his favorite son, Joseph. And just before his death, he paints bright windows of possibilities in the lives of his sons. Now, I, I want to say this. Any parent that is worth his or her salt knows that children's ears must be turned into eyes. They must be able to hear a vision of their future before they can imagine it. You've heard me talk about it from the pulpit before. If you tell a child that they are stupid enough times, you have created a vision for them of stupidity. If, if you paint a picture of failure for your children enough times, if you talk about it enough, they, they, what they're seeing with what they're hearing, their vision becomes that of failure. They must hear a vision of their future before they can imagine it. When a parent speaks of possibilities, a vision of tomorrow is indelibly impressed on a child's mind. When a parent speaks of possibilities and a vision is caught children, Children begin to think, I really can be this person that my mama thinks I can be. I, I, I will be, I will be able to become what my daddy says I shall be. It is important for all of our parents to know that we are purveyors of possibilities. For all of Jacob's shortcomings, for everything that he did wrong, one thing he understood was his role as a parent. And before he breathed his his last breath, he called his boys before him and began to bless each of them. He began with the eldest and worked his way to the youngest, a dozen in all. Reuben, Simeon, and Levi comprised the first four of four trios. But then came Judah. To Judah, he spoke words that set this tribe apart for future royalty. Judah's lion would triumph in the 12 tribes. His his tribe would become the heir to the everlasting throne of David. Listen to the words of Jacob to his son Judah. You can find this, you can find this in the previous two verses, verse 8 and 9 of chapter 49. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. 
Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he couched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? Jacob then spoke words that I believe made his hands tremble and made Judah's ears tingle. He looks through the lens of the future and he prophesies what he sees. In verse 10, he says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And we see locked away in this verse, like some ancient fossil encased in amber, is the oldest name of the Messiah who would come. Somebody shout Shiloh. Somebody shout Shiloh. And tonight I want to share three powerful truths I feel the Lord has revealed to me through this passage of scripture that are important for us to consider as we celebrate this season. Number one is his name is powerful. Shiloh is one of those names that is so powerful in scripture that, that they have a, a, a hard time making sure we can understand it properly. And, and because of that, Pastor David, the, the name Shiloh has several meanings. It has a multiplicity of meanings. It means a messenger. It means a peacemaker. And it means a deliverer. And, and through all my years of study, Brother Chris, of the scripture and, and having heard thousands of messages preached uh, across powerful pulpits. There's only one I know who rightfully wears each of those titles of a messenger, a peacemaker, and a deliverer, and his name is Jesus. Jesus is the messenger sent from heaven with a message of reconciliation between a wrathful God and sinful man. Jesus is not just the one who brings peace. He's the one who creates. He's the one who makes peace. He is the peacemaker. And he is called Jesus. Have you ever wondered where they got that name? Why, why did they call him Jesus? His name is Jesus because he is the savior and the deliverer of this world. The name Jesus literally means the Lord is my salvation. And Shiloh describes all that Jesus came to do in this life. He is a powerful name. The second truth I want to offer for your consideration this evening is that his timing is, it's perfect. Jacob gives us the timing of Shiloh's arrival into this world. He said that the scepter would not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. And we know that Jesus was of the tribe of Judah. And the first chapters of Matthew and Luke attest to this his earthly lineage. However, what is astounding is that Jacob prophesied when the Messiah would be born. For he said Shiloh would come before Judah lost his scepter. And in the time of Caesar Augustus, the land of, of Palestine was conquered and made into a Roman province. Shortly thereafter, the Romans took away the final visage of authority from the Jewish Sanhedrin. The scepter departed, but it did not depart until Jesus was born, which tells me that he's always on time. When we get to the brink, we find him there. When we teeter on the edge of the abyss, we find him there. He's the Lord of the periphery. In our confusion, he's there. In our pain, he's there. In our fear, he's there. When we're broke, he's there. I heard preachers say for years, when you're broke, busted, and disgusted, when you're all three of those things wrapped up in one, guess what? He's there. When we mess up, he's there. When we fail, he's there. When we disappoint him and those around us, he is there. He is the Lord of our calamity. And when we get to know God, we, we understand he always operates on a different timetable. But he's never too late. 
Mary and Martha discovered outside the tomb of their brother Lazarus when, when they thought he was four days too late. They found out that he's always on time because at Christ's command, Father Time must bow his aged head to omnipotence for Jesus, the Bible tells us, is the resurrection and the life. For 1,700 years, people looked for Shiloh. In the fullness of time, he came. He's never late. His timing is perfect. Somebody say perfect. The third truth I want to present to you tonight is that his work is precious. Somebody say precious. Jacob foretold Shiloh's work to be that of gathering the people. The false shepherds scatter, but the true shepherd has come to gather. False shepherds are here to scatter the flock, but the true shepherd is here to gather. Speaking of his purpose, Jesus said in John chapter 12, verses 32 and 33, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. We need to understand tonight that the cross still gathers. It has not lost its magnetic power. It still draws the wayward back to the Father's house. There is still power in the cross. Now I, I know today, I know today, Brother Kelly, that it's a lot easier for people to hear about the old rugged cross and, and sit through a service and, and walk out with, without shedding a tear. But I remember the days when I would sit in service and someone be, would begin to sing the old rugged cross and, and that, that old hymn. And, but before it was over, there wasn't a dry eye in the place. Now, I, maybe for some of us, the cross needs to be polished off. But the reality is the cross is just as powerful today as it has ever been. It draws those who have gone away, who've gone astray, those who have departed, those who have failed, those who have sinned, those that others have given up on, those that others have forgotten, those that others have dismissed, those that others have put away. It draws them back and says, you are still viable to me. There's an old song that talks about the cross that says, though millions have come, there's still room for one. We must never forget his precious work is one of gathering as a, as a mother hen gathers her chicks the savior came to draw all men unto himself i think of john newton i don't know how many of you know of him and he's a very interesting character he was he was a rough dirty slave trader who hated life and life hated him but a shipwreck caused him to cry out to god and from that moment he had an experience from that moment on, he crisscrossed England sharing his testimony and, and his song, Amazing Grace. Well past his retirement age, nearly blind, speaking in nothing but whispers, he would step into pulpits to describe God's incredible mercy. And on one particular Sunday, an assistant guided him, guided Newton to the pulpit and, and stood behind him to make sure that the aged preacher had everything that he needed. Newton leaned forward into the microphone and with a whisper he said, Jesus is precious. And after a long uncomfortable pause, he leaned forward into the microphone again and repeated, Jesus is precious. At this point, the assistant thinking this, this old time preacher, he must be getting forgetful. He leaned forward and whispered, hey, you've already said that to the congregation twice. Newton turned to his helper and he loudly says, yes, I know. I've said it twice and I'm gonna say it again because somebody needs to hear it. Jesus is precious. He is precious precious and and the work that he accomplished at Christmas is altogether precious. John Doan once wrote, "'Twas much that man was made like God before, but that God should be like man much more. 
An anonymous pen once wrote, it is our greatest need. If our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness. So God sent us a savior. And, and, and what's so incredible to me tonight is all of the truths that we are contemplating right now. His name is powerful. His timing is perfect. And his work is precious points to the promise that there will be another gathering. It, it points to the reality that God is not finished yet. It points to the reality that, that it is his heartbeat. It is his mission. He was here for 33 and a third years to develop a kingdom and restore and reconcile. But there will come a day, the Bible says, where he will step out in the eastern sky, shall part, and he will call us home because his mission is to gather a preacher was trying to finish his, his sermon when his little daughter came into his study and said, Daddy, can we play? And he answered, I'm truly sorry, sweetheart, but, but right now I'm, I'm in the middle of preparing the sermon. But if you give me an hour, then I promise we can play. She said, okay, when you're finished, Daddy, I'm going to give you a great big hug. And her father told her, well, that's great. That's nice. I, I can't wait. Thank you very much. The story says that she went to the door and she reached the door but came running back to her father's desk, threw her arms around him and hugged him tight. He said, now hang on just a second. I thought you were going to give me a hug after I finished. She answered, Daddy, I just wanted you to know what you have to look forward to. <laughs> and I, I, I think so often in this commercialized season, listen to me now, I, I really want to try to bring this home for us. I think so often in this commercialized season and, and way we have become accustomed to celebrating the birth of Christ, we at times convolute the reality of why all of this happened, but today we need to be reminded that at Christmas heaven embraced us at, at, at Christmas a door was reopened so that you and I again would have an opportunity as Adam and Eve did in the garden to literally embrace heaven and embrace God in a personal, in a real in a deep way, heaven opened the door for embrace and showed us what we have to look forward to. You see, at Christmas, God prepared a path. He prepared a path for us to find our way back to him in the way he originally intended for us to relationship with him. Christmas is, is, is more than trees and, and it's beyond ornaments and gifts and, and an opportunity to get together with family. And I, I know there are many that are pining over the reality that we can't have Christmas dinner the way we have in the past and some of you aren't going to be able to see your children or your parents or your grandparents. Uh, some of you may not want to see them and, and you just found a good excuse. But, but I know there are many that are pining over all of these things that we feel like we lost and there's nothing wrong with trees and ornaments and gifts and, and getting together with family. We all ought to do and celebrate those things that way. But Christmas is, and we need to know this, Christmas is a celebration of the bridge that God built through Christ for us to be restored to our rightful place in the kingdom of heaven. The, the, the Christmas story, the story of Christmas and Christ's birth is more than the literal birth of a child. It is the unfolding of a master plan to reconcile a lost world to a redeeming Savior. Noel, all now is well. Shiloh has come. The Messiah is here. 
What are you saying, Pastor? I'm, I want to challenge each of us to think beyond the manger and the shepherd and the altar and the wise men and the frankincense and the gold and the myrrh and the little staging of that setting that we do every year. I, I challenge us to think for a moment with me beyond the setting and, and how we've aggrandized the moment and commercialized the experience and come to an understanding that this moment, this moment that we call all Christmas is in fact God entering into a corrupt world that was full of sin and degradation to legally create a path for you and I to be reunited as sons and daughters to the creator of all the earth. Why do you get excited and celebrate Christmas? Well, it's more than just about a manger. It's because, Pastor David, I understand the end of the story and the end of the story is God made a way through that child for me to be reunited with him. His name is powerful. His timing is perfect and his work is precious. How can you say that? Because as I look across this congregation, I see changed minds and I see changed relationships and I see changed people, people that have come out from among them, people who are different today than they were three months ago, three years ago, even three decades ago. And it is all because God robed himself in flesh and came to earth in a manger. His name is powerful, his time is perfect, and his work is precious. He is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Noel Shiloh has come. Now all is well. The Messiah is here. And he came for you. 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 He came for your children. And he came for your parents. And he came for your grandparents. And he came for your siblings. And he came for your cousins. And he came for your friends. And he came for your co-workers. And he came for your neighbors. And he came for your enemies. Noel. Shiloh has come for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life you need to understand tonight and I want you to get this what are you telling us Jacob Jacob is telling us he was given at his birth not at his death he was given at his birth as a gift not at his death it was his mission it was his purpose it was his destiny before he ever burst forth from the womb his coming robed in flesh and laying in a manger signified the single greatest act of love and deliverance humanity the world and the cosmos would ever know he knew before I can die for them I have to be born for them before I can die for them I have to be born for them Noel Shiloh has come and as we move forward to celebrate this season let us not forget Jesus was sent to be our salvation. The child in a manger is easy to see. The story of a virgin birth and swaddling clothes is easy to see. But the reality of this story is as a child, he was sent as a lamb to the slaughter. And it's not easy to see. And not only is it not easy to see, it's often rejected. But I challenge this group of people tonight to open your hearts and open your spirits to the reality of his birth because I believe it's only there we can fully understand the love with which Christ came to this earth. Jesus is born. That's what Christmas is all about. And that was 
is the fulfillment of a plan of God to reconcile us back. Jesus was born in a manger that we might live in a mansion. He was wrapped in rags that we might be wrapped in clean linen. Oh, as the writer of Hebrews said, he endured the contradictions. The great God of heaven was born in an animal shelter, born as the Lamb of God, died as the Lamb of God. His name is Jesus. He shall save his people from their sins. Noel! Shiloh is come. And I'm closing. Pastor, why are you so why are you so demonstrative tonight? And Christmas service is supposed to be easy. Well, it's because I think so many of us have forgotten how incredible this story is. When God came down and he wrapped himself in flesh as he was as he was creating himself in the womb, he knew what his end would be. Bible says that he knows the end from the beginning. He sees, he doesn't exist in time. He exists in eternity. Eternity is, it is an objection to time. Time lives in eternity. Eternity knows no restriction of hours or weeks or days or months or years. And as God was formulating that in the womb of Mary, he already knew what his destiny was. And while the devil was trying to figure out how in the world is God going to create a path to restore relationship to people that were cut off because of their sin. Jesus said, I'm going to be born here. I'm going to come. Because that's the only way for me to create a path to bring all of these people back to me the greatest thing that Jacob ever told his children was there is coming a day when the stories that we heard about Adam and Eve walking through the garden in the cool of the day communicating one on one with the creator of the universe there comes coming a day There's coming a day when Shiloh comes and his birth is going to lead to complete and utter reconciliation of anyone and everyone that wants a relationship with him. And for those of you tonight in this building and across, across the airwaves tonight, for those of you that are wondering what in the world will ever give me the escape I need. For those of you that are wondering, can, can, I ever, can I ever really find peace and love? Can I ever really find freedom? Can I ever really find these things? God sent me to this pulpit tonight to tell you the Christmas story is so much more than a manger scene. A couple of songs and, and some sheep and some goats <laughs> the Christmas story is Christ saying, I love you enough to be born to die. And in my birth, through my death, everything that you've ever done in your life that's wrong, that's sinful, is forgiven. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that Shiloh has come. Noel Shallow has come. Now all is well. The Messiah has come. Judah, don't get beside yourself in this circumstance because there will come a day when Shallow will come. One step further and then I'm going to quit. What did that mean?
mean to Reuben? And what did that mean to Simeon? And what did that mean to Benjamin? And what did that mean to all his boys? What did it mean to Joseph? What did it mean to Levi when he said, Shallow will come? What kind of understanding and promise was that? It was the promise that, you know what, right now, boys, all we can do is push this stuff that we do ahead one year. But there's going to come a day when a sacrificial lamb is going to be born, live a life, and be sacrificed for us. And when that happens, that blood, it's not just going to go forward, but like a great crimson wave, it's going to come all the way back to where we are today. And from all and throughout all eternity, God's perfect plan made a way. No well shallow has come. No well shallow has come. Praise the name of the Lord. Would you stand with us tonight? I know under the sound of my voice, I know in a crowd this size and those that we have in our live service tonight, I know in this group of people, there are those who need to know that there is something bigger than they are to take them from where they are to a new place. Is there anybody in here, is there anyone in here that would be willing to raise your hand real high, stick it up and say, I know what it's like to have God do a great work in my life. Anybody willing to raise that? Look around this room. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul. But I know in a crowd this size and across Facebook tonight, there are, I know that we're big enough, that we're large enough, that there are people that are wondering. And beyond that, there are people that you're going to come in contact with and throughout this Christmas season, on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, and when you get together with your families as you can safely, there are going to be those people that need to know and understand the fullness and the depth of the Christmas story. Don't let it just be a time of presents and gifts and family. Don't let it just be a, a nice little manger setting where we, we, we talk about how cute the baby and swaddling clothes in the manger manger is help them understand that this is a moment that defines all Christianity and has created a perfect way of of escape and reconciliation for you I wonder if we could just gather with our families would you just join hands with your families I know we're all seated together tonight and I want us to pray a very special prayer tonight I want us to pray that everyone in this building would have a fresh new revelation and understanding of what Christmas means to all of us and the opportunity that it has created for us. Would you pray for your loved ones right now that the Christmas story would be one that leads them the rest of their life. It would be a beacon of hope. God, we're so thankful for the opportunity that we've had to be together in your presence tonight. So thankful, Lord, for the spirit and atmosphere of worship. Thankful for the faith. God, we're thankful for your word. Thankful for your promises. God, you are truly so good to us. And I'll be the first to admit that so many times we, we've created this false sense of what Christmas is and what it really means. It's, it's so convoluted for so many at this point. It's so commercialized for so many at this point, Lord, that it's, it's really hard to see how much it tips the scale, how great it is, how incredible of an act it was. I mean, it, it's awesome. It's awesome that you, you robed yourself in flesh. And we, we appreciate the miraculous move that caused that to happen, but the sacrifice that was made in that birth the entire reason, the real reason why you came to this earth to gather us together, to reconcile us, to create a path to heaven where we can embrace heaven and heaven can embrace us. God, I pray in your name right now that that mindset, that that understanding, that that revelation would get down, Lord, down deep, way down deep in our soul. And Lord, that it would birth forth, that it would bring forth something powerful, something that transforms us Something that causes us to go from one level to the next. And not only, Lord, helps us. 
God, let that picture that's painted in us through this understanding of what Christmas really is. God, let us be the light for somebody else. Let us be that Christmas star for somebody else. Let us be the guiding light for somebody else. God, in your name, let us be an extension of your story. Noel Shiloh has come. Shallow has come. The creator of the universe. Almighty God. The Prince of Peace. The Everlasting Father. Noel Shallow has come. Hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lord. If you're done praying... I want to turn you loose for about a 30 second praise break. And if you've been touched by the throne of God and by the birth of Christ, come on, I want you to give him praise right now. Give him praise right now. Yes, come on, give him praise right now. Yes, 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 hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I said, Shiloh has come. He's come to make a way for you. He's come to provide a way for you. Yes, he has. Come on, you got 15 more seconds. Just give God praise for a moment. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Noel. Now, all is well. Jesus has come. Yes. Oh, somebody clap your hands to the Lord and shout with the voice of triumph. Come on, let heaven hear you right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. 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 Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Oh, that's all right. Hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lord. Noel Shallow has come. Hey, everything's going to be okay. Jesus is here. It's all going to be all right. Jesus has come. Christmas fulfilled the prophecy. Jesus has come. Everything's going to be all right. You can make it. Yes, you can. Yes, Noel. Shallow has come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Would you clap your hands to the Lord one more time? Somebody shout hallelujah one more time. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Christmas story is more than a children's book. It is the path by which he created an opportunity for us to be embraced by heaven. And for that I am thankful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Facebook, we love you and we appreciate you. And until we meet again next Wednesday night, may God bless you, your family. Merry Christmas. Praise the name of the Lord. I, I would.